Well, good morning. Welcome back to the broadcast Retirement Network. I'm Jeff Snyder. This is BRN AM for Wednesday, December 8th, 2021. And our top story today, checking the box, leveraging ESG data to build client portfolios. Well, joining me now to discuss this and a lot more, John Faustino is the head of FI360 for Broadridge. John, great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us on the program this morning. Great to see you, Jeffrey. Thank you so much for having me. And we're going to talk ESG and sustainability. Let, let's, uh, let's talk about the interest in this really important topic. H have you seen it explode over the past year, several years? We have. I'd say in the last 12 to 18 months, we're seeing a lot more interest from our advisor software clients and our advisor designees asking us about education, about help with investment policy statement creation, and also asking for data in the software to help them identify ESG investments. And what do you think has driven this, this interest? Is it from the plan sponsors? Is it just you know, participants clamoring for it? Is, have you got any, any idea as to what is really take, why this has taken off? Yeah, I, I believe it's really grassroots fundamentally. If you look at just where the focus is in the United States in 2021 versus 2020, there's a lot more concern. There's a lot more interest in environmental, social, and governance issues. So it absolutely is coming from planned participants and also individual wealth clients. So FI360 not only provides solutions for those advisors that work with 401k plans, um, but also foundations and endowments and also wealth accounts. And we're seeing an increasing interest from uh, wealth advisors in those solutions. And they're telling us that individual wealth clients are asking more about these investments in their portfolios today. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about the new Department of Labor proposed rules. It seems, uh, as I read them, you can correct me, of course, if, if I'm wrong, that it really opens the doors to including these factors as tools to evaluate investments. How, how does this smooth the way, or does it smooth the way, into the American retirement system like 401k, 403b, governmental 457? Yeah, so, so my take is the same as yours. Um, I read the new proposed rule that came out in the middle of October, and there's a comment period now that's open until the middle of December. I expect the rule is going to be finalized a, a month or two after that, based on the, the receptiveness that I've heard to it. It differs um, a lot from the rule that was put out at the end of the Trump administration, uh, end of October in 2020, which basically said you can't use any ESG themed funds within a qualified default investment alternative. So a, a target date fund or a managed account that you might put people in as a, as a default when they sign up for a 401k plan. But it also reinforces the fiduciary requirements that ERISA lays out for plan sponsors to look at the pecuniary interests, the, the risk return characteristics of funds first and foremost. So from my perspective, it, it does a nice job of balancing both the ability to utilize ESG, but not, um, uh, so not, not demonizing it, um, but really requiring those fiduciary responsibilities to be there first and foremost. So it really becomes about like a Venn diagram intersection of the good fiduciary characteristics and then you know ESG or, or other characteristics that, that might be attractive to participants as well. If I'm an advisor guiding a, a plan sponsor or guiding an individual, I've got to sift through a lot, a lot of data around these types of products. How do you gather this information, John, and, and put it in a way that is meaningful, dis display it in a way that is meaningful and helps with that detailed analysis to protect the fiduciary? That's a, that's a real challenge. And there's about 15 or 20 known ESG providers to me. There's probably more than that out there. And one of the things that's really interesting, there was a study done by State Street in 2019 that I think is still relevant today. And it showed that the two biggest providers or the two most well-known providers of the ESG data, MSCI and Morningstar Sustainalytics, had a very low correlation between both of them. It was around 0.53. You have to be correlated at 0.7 for it to be really meaningful. So what that tells me is that if you look at one single ESG provider's data, you're biased towards their view, whatever that is. Um, so that's a, that's a real challenge that there's not consistency yet. 
the new SEC chairman, Ginsler, is expected to require some more ESG reporting among American companies. And eventually, I believe this is going to be standardized. But the reality is that it's not today. So the approach that FI360 has taken, we actually added some ESG data points in our software in August. We're working with a firm called Owl Analytics, and they take a wisdom of the crowd approach. So they look at multiple providers and what they're saying about ESG exposures. Um, so you're getting kind of you know the, the middle of the road, the consensus view, as opposed to one that's slanted towards one firm's perspective or, or another's. But that is uh, absolutely a big challenge. Yeah, and just as a follow-up to that, I mean, you compare what's happening here in the States to what's happening in Europe, but collect, and, and Europe is by far ahead of the U.S. in terms of adoption, but consistently what you hear is the, the concern about transparency and reporting, and looks like there's a little bit of ways to go, but I, I, I tend to like what you're describing, which is you get the wisdom of the crowd, you bring it all together for the analyst, the advisor to really look through and sift through. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. And, you know, I view ESG, it's evolving from my perspective, like other factors are. So uh, style, size, momentum, I think ESG is going to be just another set of factors that folks look at. One of the other interesting things that, that we've done is look at those funds that have ESG in their name um, and then compare them to the consensus ESG data that we have. And most of the funds that have ESG in their name, they do a good job of including ESG exposures in their funds, but there is a small minority that don't. Um, so there is some greenwashing out there where there's firms that are using ESG in the name of their fund to try to you know, get assets in it that aren't really following, um, I guess, industry recognized uh, exposure tactics. So that's something that folks need to be careful of. And that's why, you know, you can't judge a book by its cover. You have to look at some underlying criteria when you're making your selections, if you're acting in a fiduciary capacity. Yeah, really, really important. Well, John, I need to take a very quick break. Quick break excuse me. When we come back, we'll talk about how ESG analysis dovetails nicely into fiduciary responsibility. You're going to want to stay tuned right here on BRN AM. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses, I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Are you stuck with a low credit score? A credit report and score that's causing you to be denied credit or pay higher interest rates than others for the same things? Then do what Terrence did and call Credit Repair for your free credit evaluation to help restore your credit. I started thinking about buying a new house and my score wasn't where I needed it to be. I called and spoke with one of the representatives and we just had a good conversation and I, I liked what he was saying. Just one call for his free credit evaluation was all it took to start back on the track to repairing his credit. 
I'm seeing the deletions and I'm getting the report, so I know something's being done. It does make a difference to me. All it takes is one call to get started. Credit Repair has given me a second chance to have a better credit score. Don't let a low credit score hold you back another day. Do what Terrence did and make the call for your free credit evaluation. Call 800-819-4152. That's 800-819-4152. Again, 800-819-4152. Welcome back. We're talking this morning to John Faustino, the head of FI360 for Broadridge. John, thanks so much for staying with us this morning. Thank you. All right. So let's let's talk a little bit about, I want to kind of dovetail into fiduciary responsibility. And, and I think you can make the case, and you tell me if I'm wrong, that reviewing ESG and, pro and provide, performing an analysis using tools such as what Broadridge has produced actually fits in very nicely with your fiduciary responsibility, whether you're an advisor or a sponsor of a large retirement plan. I, uh, I, I agree with that. And if you look at fiduciary today, I'm sorry, if you look at ESG today versus where ESG was 20 some years ago, there's a new realization that ESG criteria are driving buying decisions by individuals, um, whether they're boycotting a company or, or deciding to shop more at a place because of its social uh, policies and the like. So one could actually argue that if you don't take ESG into account because of the impact that, that it could have on the financials of a firm, that you are um, not fully completing your fiduciary responsibilities. So it's a very different environment in 2021 um, than, it, than it has been historically for sure. Let's talk about the quarterly fiduciary meeting, and, and we've all been there, I've been there, you've been there. Every quarter, come together, talk about the plan, talk about the investments. Are you seeing hearing from your clients and vis-a-vis and, and -vis their clients more conversation around ESG sustainability and the need for analytics around selecting investments of these types? We, we are um, hearing about more interest in those quarterly meetings with plan sponsors, for example. Um, we're hearing about them with the individual wealth clients a little bit more. I feel that there's still some trepidation associated with ESG in retirement plans because of that late 2020 rule that came out in the Trump era. Um, so that made folks, I think, a little bit gun shy. But I believe, you know, with this with this new rule, if it is implemented along the lines that it's been um, that it's been uh, proposed here, there's a there's a likelihood that we're going to see a lot more ESG like flows into retirement plans. Uh, yeah, I mean, I th certainly think, and you can tell me what you hear as well. Anecdotally, I've heard that you know participants of all generations are interested in um, having access to some type of ESG option. And that's, that's, really, that's really a broad uh, topic, right? I mean, ESG means different things to different people, but I do believe that people are interested in these types of investments. But with putting that in your plan comes a lot of due diligence and a lot of uh, documentation to protect yourself from uh, litigation down the road. That's right. And that due diligence and those requirements in a in an ERISA covered plan in a 401k plan is higher than it is in a, a wealth account where you're acting as a fiduciary or a foundation and endowment account where you're acting as a fiduciary. So if uh, if an individual investor in their wealth account says, you know, hey, you know what, Jeffrey, I would like to invest in this company because I believe in what it's doing socially, you have to follow that individual's um, you know lawful request and say, okay, there might be some um, impacts if there were to the expected return, but you have to follow that client's uh, requests. In a 401k plan, you have to put the risk return characteristics first and foremost. So the bar is higher in an ERISA covered plan than it is in a wealth account or in a foundation and endowment, which is why we've seen the adoption a, a little bit slower uh, on, on the uptake side in the 401k plans. And from my perspective, the, the trend is associated with this personalization that we're seeing just in general. And there's a lot of positive benefits to that. So if you get the same risk return characteristics, but someone feels more connected to their portfolio because they believe in the underlying companies that are that are included in there, they're a lot less likely to sell if something goes down a little bit 
um, and you know, display some of those behaviors that we've seen really hamper individuals' performance relative to what an institutional investor will do. So I think the personalization that comes from ESG um, and, and some other criteria can be really helpful to long-term investor outcomes. And how do you, you know, going back to the data and collection of data, uh, every advisor that uses the tool, every advisor that works with a client has to sift through uh, tastes. I may like Pepsi, you may like Coke, right? But they, they've got to sift through that. How do you capture all the data and provide a different analysis based on each person's taste? That's a, that's a great question. And what we do today in our solutions, Broadridge FI360 solution, uh, FI360 solutions, we include only pooled investment vehicles. So we've got mutual funds, exchange traded funds, and collective investment funds would, would be relevant on the retirement side. Um, and we include an E score, an S score, and a G score. So environmental, social, and governance overall for a fund, and then an overall ESG score. So we allow for a little bit of customization in terms of searching for funds that have specific uh, exposure to environmental or social or governance. In the future, we expect to include even more data points. The, the vendor Owl Analytics that we work with has another 12 underlying criteria. So we expect some more nuanced searches to be available in the future. But right now we allow for it at that kind of higher ES and G level so that you can um, you know, work, work a little bit within those constraints. Well, wow, I think like most everything else, it's it's evolving and it continues to evolve. John, we're going to have to leave it there. Great seeing you. Thanks so much for joining us. And we look forward to having you back on the program again very soon. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. That wraps up this episode of BRNAM. Have a topic of interest, someone you think we should talk to, drop us a line. And don't forget, for all the information in retirement markets, technology, personal finance, so much more, check out today's edition of our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse. Want to search our archives or check out our latest content? Visit our streaming partners, Roku, Amazon, Samsung, and over 100 more. We're back again tomorrow. Until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe, keep on saving, and don't forget, roll with the changes. Now is your opportunity to co-create content around any topic on the FIRST Lifestyle and Wellness Network. Reach a global audience through our platform and co-own exclusive branded content. All of our programs are available on demand and also as audio-only podcasts so you can take us on the go. Broadcast Retirement Network, available anytime, anywhere, and on any device. Are you being audited and do you owe the IRS $10,000 or more in back taxes? Is the IRS threatening to take more of your money? Don't fight the IRS alone. The Tax Doctor is here to help you negotiate your tax bill and reduce your stress. The IRS can freeze your assets and seize your bank accounts, but you can stop these IRS actions. The Tax Doctor will work with you using our years of experience to represent your case to help you get the best resolution under the IRS guidelines. Help is here to deal with the IRS to reduce your stress. We've handled thousands of cases, so we know what we're doing. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, do not call the IRS alone. Call a Tax Doctor now for a tax emergency analysis. Call 800-224-6439.